Hello, our beautiful people. Welcome to Ambition on Fleek. I'm your co-host, Janae Honest. And I'm your other co-host, Peng Peng Lee. And we are both NCAA national champions and know what it takes to be successful athletes. So welcome to our podcast, and we want to share our stories with you. Our mission is to inspire and motivate you through our unique stories from our gymnastics experiences. So through the sport of gymnastics, we have learned the importance of balance when it comes to addressing the physical, the mental, and the emotional side of life. Let's go into our perfect 10 moments of the week. So I'll start off with mine. But Yesterday, uh, I had a little meeting, and I was very stressed out after. You know those meetings where they just tell you so much information about your life and kind of like, you're not taking the right direction, or you're being pulled in two different ways? So, um, normally I would cry after. (laughs) But I was really (laughs) proud I didn't. (laughs) But one of my perfect 10 moments was that I called my mom and to talk about it, and um, I'm trying to set up meetings with other people just so I have all the information possible about what my career choices are. So uh, yesterday could have been a very stressful breakdown kind of day, which it wasn't as bad as it normally is. So I was happy and proud of myself that I had these goals to call this person today and get those meetings sorted out so that I can finally move forward at ease with my career and I'm not doing anything to jeopardize my career. You are so right. You didn't tell me you had a huge crying session like you did. I didn't cry. <laughs> That's why. No, yeah, Janae knows. <laughs> so I remember I came over one time to plan for this podcast, and she opens the door, and her eyes are just so watery, and, like, you could tell, like, lip quivers, all of that. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was trying to hold it in so She was hard. already on the verge, and so I was Janae like, goes, what happened? what's wrong? And you know those words, what's wrong? It's just like, <gasps> are like you okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are you okay? No, I'm not okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I'm proud of you. Thanks, Jay. I'm, t- <sighs> I'm sad that you're leaving, but, you know. I know. You gotta. I gotta do what I gotta do. I'll just come visit. I've never been to Toronto. Well, my perfect 10 moment. So if you guys didn't know, um, on the side of gymnastics, I also love dance. So that's almost like my second passion. And I decided to take my first dance class since my knee surgery. And I went to Millennium Dance Complex. And if you guys, I'm sure you guys have heard of it because all the best videos of these these, um, choreographers or um, these super cool dances are at, this dance studio. So this dance studio is very well known, really intense. All the pros go there. <laughs> we went once, Janae and I. <laughs> no, this, yeah. Uh, three is, three years ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. So this is my first time going back in like two years. And I was just really proud of myself because I decided to go by myself. It was a very spontaneous decision. And I kind of didn't want, I wanted to, I was waiting it out. Well, first of all, because of my knee and um, I didn't want to get in trouble for like dancing (laughs) if I wasn't cleared yet. Um, And another thing is I wanted to like bring somebody with me. I wanted to bring a buddy. I wanted some emotional support. But I was like, no, Janae, if you want to dance, just go and dance. It doesn't matter. Go by yourself. You know, you just got to do what you got to do. Nike, just do it. It. So Nike, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I signed up on my phone to make sure I couldn't like back out of it last minute because I decided to go two hours before the class. And um, it was super fun. I was really proud of myself. I stayed up with the choreography. <laughs> um, I wasn't getting frazzled. And it was just so fun. And guys, it was a full on cardio workout. I was dying. <laughs> I haven't done something that strenuous since my bar routine last nationals so um <laughs> you can imagine my um my heart rate was just today was funny skyrocketing she, janae is kind of calming the story down a little bit she was like oh, i was like out of breath wheezing yeah i was wheezing <laughs> oh my goodness but um this perfect 10 moment is actually going to segue into our topic so i wanted to get a video i wasn't able to get a video of me dancing because my stupid ass didn't (laughs) press the record button. (laughs) It's fine. Um, But my point is I put my camera like on the floor and angled it so I would, you could see me dance. 
didn't press the record button, but as um, we're about to start to dance, I'm focusing on the camera and focusing on, oh, am I in the frame? I got to do really good because I'm recording this one and I like want people to see how cool this dance is. And it was the worst combo I did in the entire class. <laughs> do you know why? Because I wasn't in my zone. So the topic for today is staying in your zone with distractions. So zone, Peng asked me this question. Yeah. What is your zone? So basically what I think about me getting in my zone is basically focusing in on what I'm doing at that moment. So I think about tunnel vision, like you're focusing on your bar routine. I think of that in my zone. So whatever you do to focus, whether it's a deep breath, saying your cues, listening to music, however you get pumped up for whatever you're doing, whether it's, you know, homework. I never got pumped up doing homework, but you know, <laughs> maybe that's you. Um, so that's what I think about being in my zone, but maybe you think of it a little differently. No, I think, I think the main, I don't actually know the main definition, but I feel like people pin the zone as being so tunnel visioned. So you aren't paying attention to anything else besides what you're doing. Like it's almost like white noise yeah. is what I think of people describe as the zone. I really think that the zone <laughs> could come in different shapes and sizes, if you will. <laughs> like the white noise, I think I get in the zone in certain places and on other events, say if it was gymnastics, on beam, my zone is completely different than on bars. Mm, like it's completely true. different. So I think that it's it's good to recognize the different types of zones, but for you specifically, what helps you? Because I, I honestly think the zone is really just being present in the moment. Like being really tuned in to one specific moment. I, I agree. That's what I think. No, yeah, I th kind of think of that too. I, actually, I think you described you explained it better than I did because I mean, having a having a having a. Yeah, because I couldn't really. I never really thought about putting in the zone into words because it just made I sense never, to me in my right. mind. Um, and in our bodies too. But I feel like with or doing this podcast, I'm realizing that we kind of have to explain a few things, and if people don't mm. really understand what a zone is, we have to try and explain it. Yeah. In a way we understand it. So right. Um, I think I agree more with Pang's thing because, <laughs> I mean, true, like, zone, I do think of tunnel vision because. Um, well, even if in the movies, you know, in the movies when they're in the zone and they're, like, breathing heavy and they only hear their breath, they're like. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everything kind of blackens out. And yeah. You barely hear the crowd cheering and they're mumbling. They're like, come on. Yeah, like, that's, that's what true. I think of the zone. Like when people in the movies describe the zone, that's what I think about. But even though I, it's funny because say on bars for me, I actually don't know what the heck's going on around me because I think I'm so focused on swinging and it's more momentous. There's more momentum on bars, which is why I'm not aware of what's happening around me. But on beam, you can be standing on the beam and still looking at the crowd. It's like floor, I think. People do get in their zone on floor as well. But for me, beam, I being in my zone was focusing on actually smiling and looking out to the crowd. But that did, didn't mean I wasn't unaware of what was happening in front of me. I, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> when you explain floor, I think you get into your zone when you tumble, but you can play to the crowd right. and notice things around you when you're dancing around. And I think you can do that more with beam and floor. And we're just talking about gymnastics. Um because I feel that vault and bars, vault's so quick that you really don't have time to yeah, notice things around it's you. It's over under in under 10 seconds. And then bars, same thing. It's like 30 seconds and you really can't look around <laughs> because you're kind of occupied with swinging on the bars. But yeah. But I, I do want to say though, because I think there is a stereotype with the zone that you have to block everything out. And I think that uh, it's frustrating, especially when with little kids, if that's because that's what I thought when I growing up, you know what I mean? Yeah. I thought being in my zone was stereotypically zoning everything out. But then I was thinking, why can't I see this? Why is my friend doing that dance move on the side of the floor? Or why can't I see the coach, you know, cross his arms? It, it was it was just to me. I just didn't understand why I couldn't get in the zone because I was so occupied with everyone else. Yeah, because the zone could look different for you. Yeah, I feel that. You make a good point that there are different kinds of zones for yeah. people, and it doesn't have to look like the stereotypical movie. 
scene. White, yeah, white noise. <laughs> well, because I, I think what happened was when I grew up, I used the zone, what, what I thought was a zone, in a way where I can um, play to the crowd, I can look out into my audience, I use that to my advantage to make that my zone. So my zone was really focusing on how do I engage the judge? How do I make the judge smile? Oh, I should smile back at them. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny to me when they don't smile. <laughs> it's like, oh man, they're having a bad day. But to me, that was my zone because it got me out of my head anyways. Right. But uh, that was kind of, I had to learn that growing up because I thought in my head I had to be focused. Like if you watched my videos from when I competed elite gymnastics, so international gymnastics, my face, I didn't really smile on beam because I I thought that was how it was supposed to be. I wasn't supposed to notice anything. So it was just me and the beam, but because I was so focused on the beam, I actually did worse sometimes because yeah. I was just so focused on that one event rather than actually enjoying myself. And having fun. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I just agree with everything you say. No, um, I was going to say kind of similar to the same thing because I feel that um, people just kind of notice and ask questions as to why college seems more fun compared to watching the Olympics because, you know, when, you know, Caitlin went viral or they kind of just see how different college gymnastics mm -hmm. is compared to elite or a club and they say, well, why is it so much fun? Like, how come we don't see this when we watch the Olympics? Because, you know, a lot of people just watch gymnastics in the Olympics. And they notice that they're, the gymnasts aren't dancing around. And they're right. not really, they're really just focused. And, and you can, some of them will smile do the, during their routines, but most of them don't. And mm -hmm. you can kind of just see how they're just really focused. They're really trying to do well. And it's just very cookie cutter but hey, I mean, but some I, like I did. I don't. I don't know what country she was from, but the girl that had the makeup and she oh, really yeah. embraced her character in her floor routine. And, and she I think she was from a the cat. Netherlands. Yeah, maybe. And I remember loving that story because, um, like, you can't apparently. Apparently, you can't have theatrical makeup when you perform. But I'm really happy she did make that statement because it's different. You know what I mean? We need that kind right. of. You I know, think, spice yeah. it up. So I think it's a cultural thing. I think every sport might have their own zone. So it'd be kind of cool to get someone on this podcast to talk about them on their zone. Oh, yeah. I'd love to learn. But I think because when you think about uh, elite gymnastics, culturally, they probably think because someone else looks like this, they probably want that to be their zone too. Yeah. Especially if they're successful and they do have like a, you know, very stern, straight face. That's what I thought. I thought that was that was gonna get me into my zone because mm -hmm. everyone else was kind of doing it. So in, when I was younger, I thought that was going to get me into my zone, which in fact was the opposite because it made me just focus on be doing that rather than actually lighting myself up to perform at my best. So in terms of distractions, yeah. Peng was talking about she has no idea what's going on around her when she's competing bars, and I remember a young girl asked me she said oh what's it like competing on camera and I remember thinking oh I don't pay attention to the camera at all it's not that I'm <clears throat> not aware that we're on tv but it's like that's definitely the last thing I think about when I'm competing because I'm just focusing on um my event you know what I mean so and this is why I wanted to kind of talk about from my dance thing because I was focused on the camera and I was <laughs> focused on in my in frame I really got to do well because the camera's on you know what I mean and it's it's crazy because this is something you kind of have to remind yourself of daily right. of what you're doing because I that whew, that went out the window when I was in this dance class I was, and I literally forgot the choreography and everything because <laughs> I was looking at the camera at my phone so imagine how that would have worked out in when I was competing gymnastics. That definitely wouldn't have worked out. I would have done horrible routines every time. But because I would practice that in the gym every day at practice, mm -hmm. and we would practice, you know, um, doing pressure sets, and you know what I mean, when we had right. to hit, and we would do, and you, I remember I'll see other gyms, they'll do beam routines, and they'll have, like, all these distractions around oh, the beam, yeah. and they'll have to do their full beam routine with, like, clapping and these balloons and everything and I remember I don't think we ever did that but I remember thinking that's a very clever way to go about it because 
you really got to focus in and focus in on what you're doing. Um, well, you know what's interesting is I feel like when Janae and I were at UCLA, we learned so much, which is why we started this podcast because we wanted to share information with you guys. But we also have to remind ourselves on the daily because now we're in the adult world. And for some reason, it doesn't translate as like easily. <laughs> like I, I remember... Um, like, even in gymnastics, I was so confident, you know, I was telling myself, I'm great, like, because that guy also, this guy used to come into our gym and just point at us and be like, you're great, you're great, and we're like, okay, oh, cool. Waldo. But he used to come and tell us we're great, and it's funny, when I go into, now that I'm in a new industry, it's like, oh, man, I got to start from the bottom again, but I have to remember and remind myself that I'm great, Yeah. but it's, it's so funny, because I feel like I'm starting again to bring all my gymnastics habits into the adult world. Because I, I just have to remind myself, like kind of like the on-camera thing. Like, we didn't think about the cameras at all when we were like eating. I don't think any t- any one of our teammates did. No, ever. but then, but then you know, Janae goes to this one dance class. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, the one time I want to get it on camera, and that's the only thing I'm focusing on. And I remember right. sitting in my car. I wasn't upset or anything because I went there to dance. I didn't go there to get a cool video so I can post. Like, I just wanted to dance, granted. I did really well, and I was like, oh, my goodness, I want to actually get this on video <laughs> because I did really, really good. And it wasn't like the one time, the other time we went to Millennium, and we were, like, it in the back. So bad. And we just could not keep up, and everybody was a pro. Hey, but we persevered and practiced for the next two weeks. <laughs> and then and we, we got, got it, it done. <laughs> so, um, but, yeah, and I remember just sitting in my car thinking, okay, notice what happened, Janae. You wanted to get it on camera and that was the sole thing you were focusing on and that was just kind of a I'll say reality check but just like mm-hmm. a thing that I noticed like okay you did so good for like the whole hour and 15 minutes and then the last five minutes you did your worst set when you probably know the choreog- <laughs> when you pro- when I probably knew the choreography at its best and because I was thinking about Oh my gosh! Am the phone. I? I was look literally looking at my phone at the ground. I wasn't even looking in the mirror at myself. I was so focused on my phone that just who? What? What choreography? What dance <laughs> class is this? That's literally what it was like. So it was super interesting, and you made me think of something when you were talking about um, oh the the movie scene and oh and, yeah. the focus. Everybody's focus seems to look the same. So I wanted to bring up parents because. <laughs> mm. I had a parent, my father, <laughs> Papa Honest. Shout out to you, Papa Honest. <laughs> I gave him that so, name. Yeah. Papa Honest. He loves it. He's oh so funny. Goodness. He goes, oh, come in with that Kool-Aid smile. Oh, my god. And gosh. he'll just give everyone a big hug. And then that's it. And he has the biggest smile ever. He's so that happy. You'll ever see. Um, but dad's great. <laughs> he is. He is. <laughs> um, so when I was younger, my dad, he was, he just wanted me to do great. And granted, I think this is the case for most parents. So they try yeah. and like. <laughs> overdo <Overcoat>. it <laughs> so my dad would actually like give me pointers and try and like coach me from the stands especially in practice so we literally <laughs> had he literally had hand signals for me of what meant what so this meant power this meant legs wait, wait, together they can't, they can't see it no i know Oh, but just describe what you're doing. So, so Janae's doing like a fist okay, okay. right now. So he would make when he would make a fist, that meant power. And when he would put like if you're clapping your hands and strain your arms, like you're about to go in for a dive, that meant legs together. And if you <laughs> <laughs> and let's say I'm you, mad that he actually had all these symbols. No, yeah. <laughs> um, what's this? Like, how, how do you explain that? Put your toes. Yeah. Oh, what, yeah, oh. yeah. That's what that uh, meant. Though. But he, she's do, doing it with her hands, so she's kind of doing like a. Oh my gosh, with her hands. <laughs> It's like, like, a, like a puppy like dog. You, like a, yeah, doing if you're doing puppy dog guys and whatever you do with your hands. Watch the YouTube video. <laughs> this meant point toes, and then he, and then the last one was he would like point to his head, like you're trying to think, and that would mean focus. And I remember whenever he would, and I would look at my dad all the time in practice, especially when he would come to watch practice, and I would just like, what is he telling me besides you know <laughs> look like listening to my coach? I would literally just look at my dad like, oh my god, I need to focus, and it made me think like, okay, what does he think? focus looks right. like you know what I mean because he had an idea of what focusing looks like and so that just made me think about it but that could also be a little bit of, of a distraction because I do remember my coaches like getting upset like hey no like don't look at your dad at practice see my I parents know we, didn't my parents didn't come to practice my mom after, didn't uh, either well they came when I was really <laughs> young and then after when I got older they're like yeah yeah <laughs> my mom it's would come at like the end she'll come in maybe like the last 30 minutes but to pick me up, but my mom really na- never came to watch practice. My dad was like my father. Well, some people at um, at certain gyms aren't 
they don't allow parents to watch. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. I think is super interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I could see why after yeah. your story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't, my dad wasn't a crazy gym parent for sure, because I know that there are some out there. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but I think um, that's just a good example of being a, a distraction because you're trying to like focus on your event, but you're lo- like, what? And you want to listen to your parents, you want to honor your parents, so you want to like, not disappoint them so of course you're gonna look at them and see what they're telling you right um but well, they're on the outside and you kind of just have to get to a point where you both trust the coaches that they're doing their job rather than you know multiple and then like multiple people are telling you different things and then you get frustrated that's kind of what <laughs> happened to me it never got to a negative space but it was just like hard because i didn't know like what to focus on and when I was like, this is why Janae honest is scatterbrained everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah, I would, I would say parents and coaches, they all can kind of take you away from your zone. I was, um, I want to talk about a time when I was younger and I fell three times on beam. We're not going to talk. Actually, no, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to uh, talk I about got, it. I got booed basically, um, by the whole, uh, by the Where whole arena you? of 12,000 people. I was at Pan American games in 2007. I was 13 years old. Oh and I got booed by over 12,000 people. <laughs> yeah, imagine that as a 13-year-old. I wasn't even five feet yet. <laughs> it was a pretty scarring experience. Um, definitely took me out of my zone. <laughs> and so, to me, I was not able to focus at all. Like, I had the inability to focus on me. <laughs> and so, all I was thinking about, I felt... So, what had happened was, is that I was third going into event finals, and I could have knocked the Brazilian off the podium, because we were kind of fighting for third place. And were you in Brazil? I was in Rio de Janeiro. Oh, so this is why you were getting booed, I yeah, see. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I kind of skipped a couple stories. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Skipped a couple stories. I was just trying to remember why you were getting booed, because I've heard this story. But oh, continue. Yeah. And then, so, anyway, so I could have knocked her off the podium. The next day, I... I vividly remember saying this. I said, I haven't <laughs> fallen on a spin double in a really long time. And oh. what happens? The second skill in my routine. It's literally the first skill after my mount. I fell on my spin double. And I said, oh my gosh. And after I fell and I was on the ground, all I hear was, woo! And they're all cheering that I fell. Because they knew there was a door Because they knew that the was door opened. was now open. And then for me, I got up, did my second skill, fell right after right again and they all cheered again (laughs) and then by the third the door was wider (laughs) and then i fell a third time and i think we're still cheering but i think they felt bad for me because they were like well i wasn't sure i thought they were pre-clapping before the end of my routine because they were like oh good for you like yeah you know we feel bad but then there was another part of them that said yeah we have a chance yeah (laughs) so anyways i was so focused on the crowd in a bad way though because all i was thinking about was the crowd then i was thinking about oh my gosh my coach is gonna kill me after <laughs> you know that feeling when you fall and oh you're, yeah you're, just, you're scared to make eye contact with the coach because you know that they're gonna say something and oh it was just bad oh my goodness but I, but coming like thinking about how i would have gotten into my zone on beam with all those distractions it takes a lot it takes a lot of learning experiences um but i also think we used to do this in the gym, but I remember Tiger Woods telling his story when he was younger. Mm. His dad would actually blow, like, blow horns at him and, like, while he was putting and stuff to, like, help him um, just learn how to stay in the zone with all those distractions. Right. So it was interesting because we used to do at the gym, uh, we actually boot each other a couple times. <laughs> you know, we, we would be like, you suck. Yeah, and fall, would, fall. Yeah, fall, fall. But it, it was funny because it's, it's almost fueling you in a good way to learn how to translate that negative energy into something that'll fuel you in a positive way. Yeah. So it's, it's, you can practice it at any point. Yeah. I remember thinking it was really fun and funny trying to do this exercise because we were like on bars and just every time someone would yell fall, I would start laughing and actually fall. And it's like, <laughs> I'm really failing at this um, exercise, but it's okay because it's a learning experience. But yeah, I also think this can translate to if you're t- doing a presentation. Oh my gosh. I just remember trying to, because you know, if you ever make a presentation, you got to practice before you ain't just go go at it. I kind of just first. went at it, but. See, Peng's good at winging it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a little more of a spontaneous person. I was 
for that dance class. I know. I'm proud of I'm you really when you proud. said you spontaneously made that decision. Yeah. She texted me, guys, too. I really she did. Was I, was like, like, I'm I'm going. I was like, I'm going to Millennium. I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, I'm so happy. You said, you brave soul. <laughs> I know. I did say that. I said, you brave soul. Because she goes, I'm going by myself. Right. When you practice in front of people, they can kind of, like, you can tell them to do whatever that would kind of get you like veer you off of like what you're talking about you know what yeah. i mean like because you never know what's gonna happen like people will probably laugh or like well even in presentations too <clears throat> if you want it to be funny or if you're trying to speak and you see someone yawn you know how hurtful that is <laughs> <laughs> when people when you're talking to a crowd and someone's on their phone like it yeah, actually that's is true. it is kind of hurtful but it's funny because you also need to stay in your zone because you have to remember what your previous sentence was so that you can continue the conversation. Mm -hmm. But you also have to make sure to when you see them, I actually, you know what? Sometimes distractions are okay because I think you need to acknowledge the distraction, but have a quick turnaround yeah, that's to get true. back into your zone. Because you don't want to be completely unaware <coughs> of what's happening. But yeah, that's right. a good point. I just <coughs> thought about that because I was thinking what I did in my beam routine because I was very aware of like if a judge smiled back at me, or if, yeah. I don't know, one of you guys jumped, or I don't know. <laughs> Woo! I know. <laughs> or if, I, I remember during my national championship routine, I saw the Utah crowd, because they were right across um, from the <clears> beam, <throat> my beam routine, and they were at the end of the beam in their corral. I literally saw all of them cheering for me. So I remember thinking, oh, this is so cool, like cool and cute yeah. <laughs> that they're cheering for me. So I think acknowledging the distraction is okay, but it's learning how to quickly turn it around so that you're back in your focused yeah. place. That's a good point. I think it's important to acknowledge because I feel that if you don't, you can get disconnected and then it may have a negative effect in that aspect because you may be super focused, but then you may, you know what I mean? Like who knows that one smile from the other team may help you and you're like oh my goodness they aren't cheering to help like want me to fall like Peng went through in Rio de Janeiro and yeah that was interesting <laughs> you know what's funny is um so my first meet back I competed in Oregon and it was my first meet back after my two ACL injuries I get on the bars and I did a great bar routine because I was so happy it was my first routine ever coming back then I went to beam and I remember my back was turned to the floor I remember the whole crowd booing, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> this again? PTSD. <laughs> but um, I thought they were booing because I was going, but they were booing because um, they thought the girl on the floor should have gotten a higher score. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I learned how to fuel that energy to make it a good beam routine, and it was a great beam routine. So uh, it's, it's okay to practice these interesting distractions if you're willing to i think it's a fun exercise because it's fun for your friends to kind of get there and it's it puts you in a good mindset to do it yeah it's not like they're ripping on you saying oh my god you're ugly it's just <laughs> it's just you know basic words not actual physical jabs <laughs> <laughs> but it, it definitely have fun with it because we for sure did and i know um I've seen plenty of videos of um, different teams doing it on beam and they'll have these huge balloons and making so clappers and all these different noises. I wish we had that. I know. <laughs> I would have I remember ham. watching those videos um, thinking, oh, we should totally do this, like freshman through senior year. And I yeah. remember, well, we definitely tried it yelling at our, at each other on bars for sure. But that was fun. I, I think because you definitely have fun with it and it definitely is a, is a fun exercise and it's not – a bad thing because like I mentioned I cast it over plenty of times laughing because they right literally were telling me to fall and it's like okay how I'm laughing but how do I you know turn this around or how can I really mm -hmm. focus in and it's just a really it's a really good way to practice it and who knows you know what I mean like you go out there you make that presentation you have no idea what's about to happen you know what I mean yeah but you know what you're about to present on so Go out there, do your thing, and be prepared. Okay, well, in our next podcast, we want to talk about how to get into your zone and how to stay in your zone. Because I know we talked about it with distractions, but we want to kind of stretch on this topic a little more because I think it's super important just for athletes and in life in general. Because we kind of touched on everything. We, we dabbled in the we topic. Dabbled, <laughs> but we didn't, uh, you know... We just want to go in depth in, of it more because we think it's so important for you guys to know. Yeah, and just what it looks like in day-to-day -day life because 
I mean, if you really know me, you know how distracted I get on a daily oh, yeah. basis. And Same. it's um, it's quite funny, but also when you're working <laughs> with me, it could be very frustrating because I'll randomly get hungry. I want to clean. Oh, my for gosh. Absolutely like, no reason. There's no reason to clean when I'm when we're trying to you know what I mean so there's just I'm that person and I can focus when really need be but I do get really distracted and I think I learned this in college I learned that I need to study in group settings because it keeps me accountable so we're gonna we're gonna dive into that yeah more oh I'd love episode. to touch on that topic Janae. I know for real <laughs> whenever I, we do our podcast I relate to it so much but Janae where are you going where are you going <laughs> <laughs> so funny we would be working on this podcast the night before trying to write down notes this uh, she's gone for the past five minutes i'm like where is janae i find her in bed <laughs> on her phone cuddling with melissa or like her roommate she's just in her roommate's bed just chilling <laughs> she goes "Pang, have you felt this bed it's so comfortable <laughs> i'm like janae get your butt up that's literally and that's then me she'll get show. up and then she'll i don't know do a face mask and then she'll go <laughs> eat something and then she'll randomly clean the table so that's day-to-day -day life getting in your zone so we go we're we going to get into that next yes. episode. Thank you guys so much for listening to another podcast. We love you guys so much. We appreciate all of you for listening, and we hope that you guys can tweet at us, at Ping Ping Sealer, at Janae Honest, your questions or your concerns. We'd love to talk to you. When it comes um, to about, like, getting in your zone, like, what yeah. does your zone look like, or do you have any questions about the zone or anything you want us to touch on, make sure you tweet at us about it. Yeah, so we can talk about it in our next podcast. Yes, yes, yes. So make sure you subscribe, like, rate, comment, and share on anywhere you listen to these podcasts, whether it be Apple, Spotify, Google. I don't know what the other one is. Spotify. <laughs> Stitcher. Stitcher. Stitcher is the new one. <laughs> okay. See you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.